that visceral thrill that you get when the birds start pouring in or when they take off from the river. To me, that's the sound of spring. My name is Dorian Faust. I'm a writer. One of the topics I've written about is the Platte River and sandhill cranes and the habitat along the Platte. Our next person up is Doreen Faust. She wrote a book called This River Beneath the Sky. Well, a half million sandhill cranes should be enough to make any river well known. But to many people, the Platte River remains an enigma. The Platte attracts tens of thousands of bird watchers each year, but many of them don't know much about the river beyond the tiny little window that they stand by in their observation line. My husband's job in 2004 took us to Kearney, Nebraska. I encountered this strange river that was unlike anything that I had ever seen before. I traveled the river over the course of six years from the parklands of the Rocky Mountains to the mouth of the Missouri River. There's no substitute for getting outside and seeing and experiencing the natural world firsthand. It feels like spring when you come and see the sandhill cranes on the plat. The first spring migration that I saw was in 2005. What we saw, instead of a few hundred birds or a couple thousand birds, was probably a good 10,000 birds landing right outside the blind. I was entranced right off the bat. I guess I was hooked. I volunteered to start leading crane tours at Rose Sanctuary, so I had in my mind that I was going to be starting to go out to the river and talk to people about sandhill cranes. Yeah, well, cranes are pretty cautious birds, so mm -hmm. if they see movement, especially if they think it's people there. So I've been coming to the Platte for the migration ever since. For the years that we lived here, I was volunteering at Rowe and taking other people out to the blind so that they could have the experience of seeing the cranes. And the snow melts from the river, I mean, yeah. from the mountains. And Having to learn about the river and understand it so that I could explain it to other people caused me to really slow down and pay attention to it. We were at Audubon's Rose Sanctuary, which is on the Central Platte River, right in the middle of the main stem of the Platte, where it bends down as it makes a sweep across the state of Nebraska. This is the main area of habitat for sandhill cranes and whooping cranes, and also important to least turns and piping plovers. We're at the beginning of the sandhill cranes migration. They spent their winter along the Gulf Coast. If you see a picture of the central flyway, this is the little narrow spot of the hourglass before the birds start to fan out and go to a, a much wider area. This is their first stop after leaving their wintering grounds where food is no doubt starting to become depleted. During the day, the sandhill cranes are mostly out in the cornfields. They're basically just loading up on calories so that they can gain weight. They need a lot of fuel that will carry them through the migration. As dusk comes, they go into the wet meadows that line the river and round out their diet with things like crustaceans and tubers and little bits of weed. As the sun goes down, they fly in great flocks down to the Platte River. That allows the birds to stand in the water and keep an eye out for predators all around them.
Flying the whooping crane surveys makes me feel like I'm part of something bigger. During migration, our job is to spot whoopers that have roosted overnight on the plat. The purpose is to gain more understanding of the habitat characteristics that migrating whooping cranes prefer. The cool thing about flying, and especially over the plat, is that everything starts to make sense and all the pieces fit together. You can see the little abandoned channels and where the water comes from and where it's going, and everything seems orderly and beautiful. It's a special thing to be able to see whooping cranes. There are only a few hundred in the wild flock that migrates between Aransas and Wood Buffalo National Park. So they don't necessarily show up very often. Some people go their whole lives without ever seeing whooping cranes. If somebody asked me why they ought to come here and see sandhill cranes, I suppose I would tell them it's an unusual experience to be surrounded by that much life that there's a visceral reaction that you have when suddenly an entire river full of birds lifts up into the air. It makes you feel alive and it makes you feel connected with the natural world. The fact that we have that right here in the heart of North America, it's something people ought to see.